coming to you and we're inviting you to come into one of our services to bring glory and honor to God's name, to raise up a supernatural army with signs and wonders and miracles. Can you be part of this move? In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hello, everyone. Welcome to Upper Room Ministries uh, for our weekly meeting. Uh, I'd like to start off this evening by uh, praying over the offering. Before I do that, I would also like to make a small announcement. Uh, Pakistan needs support for a new live stream server. They cost up to $2,000 uh, US dollars. So up here in the front, one basket that is marked plainly is to go to Pakistan. The other basket is for the prize. Um, they are also fundraising in Pakistan for this also. We have such a need in the ministries. Um, I have been giving a talk on the evangelistic movement and the amount of money that's raised and the amount of money that's squandered. It's startling. Here, every penny that comes into the baskets goes right back out for the ministry. No salaries, no administration costs, no nothing. This is just, every penny is donated back to reaching the world. So I just encourage each and every person to give as they're being led. And uh, that also includes the uh, people watching us out there on TV. Uh, we now have a GoFundMe page that you can go on to, so we accept anything GoFundMe accepts. <coughs> so I would just like to uh, pray over the offering and say, Lord, make us good stewards of every cent that we collect here in the ministry. We are thankful for any gift, for any tithe, because it goes forth to grow God's kingdom. And we all know how blessed we actually are. And I just pray that it's not too much for us to return a small portion of those blessings back to God through this ministry. And so, Lord, we thank you for all the gifts. We thank you for the generous people out there, Lord. And we just pray that you continue to find us worthy to receive all the blessings that we do. In Jesus' name. For about the last week or two, God has laid on my heart to speak on God's love. For God is love. I'd like to open by reading 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begot love him also that is being begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For, who, oh, excuse me, for whoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth Jesus is the Son of God. Any more, any time that you turn the TV on, or you pick up the newspaper, Somebody is putting somebody else down. 
And it is only Jesus that teaches us to live the way God wants us to live. And that's to love one another, to help one another, to go out and share God's love, not only with our family and our friends and our neighbors, but with everyone that we meet. And I know from practical experience, sometimes that can be a very difficult task. But it is also something that bears rich rewards, because after you do it, you feel so good for doing it. So I just encourage each and every person that's here, that's watching us on TV, to take the time to share God's love with someone. A stranger, a neighbor, somebody at the grocery store. For you will not ever know how great your reward will be until you do share God's love. God bless you all. What's today's date? Anybody know what today's date is? June the 12th, what? 216. Sunday. We find on the news at 2 o'clock this morning, a gay bar in Orlando, Florida, was hit with a Isaac uh, terrorist. So far, there's 60 killed, 50-something wounded. They don't know how many more is going to die. But I'm going to say something's going to shock people. And how many of you know Brother Humphrey's not out here for winning your votes, your friendship, your money? I'm just going to tell it as it is. I told somebody the other day, I'm not walking on pins and needles and eggshells. Somebody say amen. amen. If I've got something to say, I'm just going to say it, and that's where it's going to be. I thank God that that happened. <clears throat> Whoa. What do you mean you thank God that happened? Do you know there's over 310 people in that place? And so far, there's only 50, 60, rather, dead, and so many injured. How many of you know that whole place could have went up in smoke? Right. How many of you believe God's trying to get this world's Amen. attention? Yes. Amen. Now the homosexuals have come out of their closet real well. And they're bright and they're bold. The lesbians and everybody. And, and the evil men and seducers are going to watch worse words. But my Bible says in Romans, I want to just read this for you real quick. We've got a special speaker here tonight, Brother Ron from North Carolina. An old country boy, I thank God he's here. But my Bible distinctly talks about homosexuality. And how many of you know homosexuality is an abomination to God? Amen. Come on, don't get quiet on me. Right. A bunch of you rinky-dink preachers out there, you won't say nothing. And guess what's going to happen? Their blood's going to be required on your hand because you want them not. Somebody say amen. amen. Romans chapter 1 says these words. Uh, no, not chapter 1. Yeah, chapter 1. Here we go here. It says, uh, starting at verse 20, 24, Wherefore God has gave them up unto your own cleansiness, through the lust of their own flesh, lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies, everybody say their bodies, their bodies. between themselves. How many of you know that's sexual affairs? He said, who changes the truth of God into a lie, he says, okay, and worshiped and serve the creator, creature more than, than the creator, who is God forever and ever. Now listen, verse 26. For this cause God gave them up to a vile affection, for even their women did change their natural use and do that which is against the issue. Even their women changed their natural use, which is even against the nature of God. So say amen. amen. Women with women. So say amen. amen. That, in case you don't know what that means, that means lesbians. That's what this is talking about. Then let's talk about homosexual men. Verse 27, and likewise, same thing here, likewise also the men leaving the natural use of, their, of the woman, how many of you know there's a natural thing between a man and a woman? Right. Yes. I'm going to be a little bit bold, a sexual thing where we have children. Somebody say amen. That's a love affair when you get married. That's natural. Somebody say that's natural. That's natural. But he says, 
uh, and, le and, and likewise the men leaving the natural use of, their, of the woman burn in lust one toward, toward another man. With men working that which is also, how many know it's men with men? That place had over 300 homosexual men in it. Two o'clock in the morning, a terrorist comes in. He killed so many. They interviewed, the interview's still going on, and the homosexual guy standing there and saying, well, I told my husband we better get out of here. How do you know that's not scriptural? Once they was interviewing how his lover committed suicide about a year ago, but he's got another lover. How many take notes that when, they, when that spirit of homosexuality comes over, they start talking, they, they don't talk like a man, they, they throw their hands and so on. How many of that, that's a sign that spirit is taking over? Right. Come on. Right. And yet our wonderful president, he gets up and he mourns them. We take uh, at the White House and drop the flag half mass because of it. You say, well, what's the matter with that? Would God drop the, ha the flag of Israel half mass when he sword Sodom and Gomorrah? But we're accepting everything down the road. Right here in York, Pennsylvania, we have mosques, Muslims, on Saturday at the flea market. I, this black brother is probably seven foot tall, almost seven foot tall. I started talking to him about Jesus. He said, I'm a Muslim. And him and I got into it by right. But he tried to tell me. He said, we love you. I said, you don't love us. I said, if you're a true Muslim, you got one job to do. You're going to kill us. You're going to cut our heads off. Amen. I said, what about Isaac? He said, well, I like Isaac. I said, then you like it when you kill us, don't you? He said, I won't kill you. I said, you would too. I said, unless, unless, unless you're like a lot of Christians. You're not really a true Christian. If you're a true Muslim, you've got to do exactly what the Quran says, and that's to kill us infidels. You people better, well, there's good Muslims. There's not a good Muslim out there. If they are a true Muslim, they have a job to kill us. So say amen. amen. Our wonderful president, president made a statement. He said, I am a Muslim. And as a Muslim, he said, you've got to either convert or one thing certain, death. That's what our Muslim president said to us. And we act like everything's okay. It's not okay. And guess what's going to happen? This terrorist stuff, that little bit you just said, is going to be so normal, so much is going to happen at the same time, that they won't even be able to report the stupid stuff. That's right. And you know what I'm going to say? And you're going to say, hey, you're going to have love. Go ahead, God, scare the hell out of us. Come on, scare the hell out of us. The gain of wisdom is to fear God. You know what's the matter with America and the world? There's no fear of God anymore. But God's going to wake this world up, brother. Come on, so say amen. Right, amen. God's not going to play games. I read the last of the book, the book of Revelation. I know what God's going to do. Hey, next part, let, let me read here real quick. We're going to get Brother Ron up here. I want to go to Jude real quick here. Jude's the last book of the Bible. Let, let's hear what Jude has to say. Jude says these words. Verse 6, and the angels which kept, not, not the first estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved in everlasting chains of darkness until the judgment of the great days. There's a judgment day coming, so I say judgment day. Judgment. Verse 7 says, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, homosexual cities, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities around them, how many of you know, when I was in Israel, I did not only see where Saul and Gomorrah was, the stones and this, but out through the desert all around, you'd see black piles and stuff. I said, what's this? He's a Torah guide, a Muslim. He said, haven't you read the Bible? When God destroyed Saul and Gomorrah, he destroyed all the sister cities. In other words, wherever the homosexuals is, it's they're going to get, get it to. So say amen. Reserved until what? To fire, hellfire and brimstone. Come on, talk to me sometime. Right. But you rinky dick preachers don't want to bring that up. Oh, you know what makes somebody mad? I'm going to say something right now. This church service that we have here is not for people. I'm telling you, we had Muslim come to my place three weeks ago from Pakistan, where we were on television, and they come in very plain room and said, 
we come to convert you to Allah. And I said, never. And they kept, I said, never. I said, you see that deer? I have a deer farm. I said, see that deer? They said, yeah. I said, if you can take one of them into a pink elephant, I'll become a Muslim. They said, we can't do that. I said, you can't take me a Muslim. But I'm telling you what. Some of you people, you say, well, I don't like your preacher. Well, then don't come in these churches. So one day, there might be a bunch of Muslims come in and start shooting. So you all you sissy five little tiny Tim, stay home. <laughs> you, you know, I gotta be so careful in this service, everything I say. We can't even have Bible study. I, I we had Bible study and somebody said to me, but I said about being sick, somebody said, Are you going to hell because you're sick? I never said, How do you know people take things out of contents? Yeah. I'm so tired of it's too late in the game to play games. Somebody say, man. When that pilot takes off on that jet or that airplane, he reaches so much speed, he says the word committed. Do you know what that means? I'm going too fast, I went too far, I've got to either go up or I'm going down. Mm -hmm. But either way, I can't stop now. Yeah. How many know we can't stop now? Right. How many can raise your hand and say, I can't stop now? And guess what? In these last days, you're not going to win friendship. Now you will if you embrace all kinds of sin. So I'm saying, man, I'm so sick and tired of phony Christians. I, I, it just, just makes me sick. It just literally makes me sick. Verse 7, As Solomon and even as Solomon and Gomorrah and the cities which were about them, in like manner, giving themselves unto fortification and going after strange flesh, and set forth for an example, suffering vengeance to eternal fire. How many of you know that means hell's going to come down on them? Mm -hmm. right. That means that even here, if, if the fire rims they fall out of heaven, they're still going to hell. And that means every one of us, even if we're a liar, baby. You say, well, you're coming down hard on homosexual. I come down hard on everything that's not of God. I come down hard on myself. How many you know, if I do the slightest thing wrong, a spot of wrinkle, this vessel will split hell wide open too. Paul, so Paul says these words, even though I preach to others to bring out my own body into subjection, I myself will be a castaway. You once saved, always saved. What do you do with that, huh? What do you do with that? God should offer eternal salvation unto all them that obey Him. What do you do with that? What do you do with Revelation? I'll blot your name out of the written book. What do you do with that? Come on. And you think it's going to get better? If you're a true preacher or a true prophet of God or a true person of God, people's going to hate you. My own daughter would say, Dad, how do you say Dad is mean? Call what you want. So my doctor, when he had to operate him, cut all this kind of stuff off down here, and 20 minutes before burning up with radiation, I just said, he's mean. No, but people who has that, has that doctor like that, they say, come in and say, oh, he's a good doctor. But let a preacher come out here and tell him, say, he's mean. So I say, man, Amen. I know it don't make people shake, but how many know the truth? That's right. Will set you free. And all hell breaks loose, buddy. Don't come running to me. Go running to him. Somebody say amen. amen. I've had so many to come running back to the ministry. I know you're telling me the truth. Pray for me. I tell them the truth so they don't come back. Huh. After strength flesh and set forth an example, example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. I'm here to tell you homosexuals and lesbians, if you do not turn yourself around and get truly saved and leave your sin, you're going to burn in hell. Yes, yes. How many of those people in that place never repented before their last breath? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. If they're living in that sin and they died in that sin, they got one place to go, that's hell. My Bible says, 
If we wore them not, God will require their blood on yes, our hands. Yes. He said, but if we warn them, he won't require their blood. You ring dig preachers and so-called Christians like that. Well, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to judge them. That's Joel saying for you. I'm not going to judge them. I will. If the Bible says it, then I'll pass judgment with what the Bible says. If God says, thou shalt not steal, you know what I'm going to say? Thou shalt not steal. And if you steal, you're a thief. If you're a homosexual or a lesbian, you're a sinner. If you're a liar, you're a sinner. If you do anything at all, you're a sinner if it's evil. So oh, here it comes. Oh, Mr. Mean. Oh, Mr. Mean. I want to apologize to you. Don't hold your breath, baby. I'm not apologizing to anybody. If you can't get over it, move on. Somebody say amen. I think God, Brother Ron, comes all the way from North North Carolina, drives a truck and all this and that. But guess what? He's a minister, but I will never, never try to tickle his ear or any of the men here or any of you people or anybody out there. If the Bible says it, that sells it, and it's not open for debate, someone say amen. That's right, man. Read about Saul and Gomorrah. Go to Genesis, read about it. Read the whole thing, chapter 19. How God sent fire and brimstone from heaven. Right. And burned up some and what? Two wicked cities, big cities, baby. And then there's other cities just like the United States. Mm -hmm. We had a homosexual come in here. I met him right out here in the, in the motel and so forth. Talked to him. He cried like a baby. Started coming to our services. But guess what? He did not want to break away from us. He finally left. How many of God loves us? But what happens is, after a while, God turns over to a reprobate mind. Right. Do you know what that means? I'm going to try to explain. God deals with you and deals with you and deals with you and deals with you and deals with you. And, with you, and after a while, God said, I'm done. Yeah. Go do what is committed. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. Right. So their mind becomes hardened, burnt. They can't think straight. Mm -hmm. The one homosexual on the news there, he said, yeah, my last lover committed suicide. Do you know why he committed suicide? Because his conscience, the Holy Ghost is doing it, you better get away from it. Instead of getting away from it, he kills himself. Brother Dave keeps talking about God's love, God's love. Get out there and win them. Talk to them. Tell them God loves you. But God has to judge you. Somebody say Amen. Oh, I love going to services where the music's playing and everybody's shouting and dancing. Oh, the Holy Ghost is at the feet dancing. I love it. But guess what? We're at war. We better put on the whole armor of God. Sister Roxanne, all she talks about is the whole armor of God. The whole, put on the whole. Not part of it. Why? It's war. Most of you out there in television, man, or wherever, you wouldn't even know the first part of the armor of God that you're supposed to have on, you're supposed to have it on the whole work, and you don't even know what, what it is. Mm -hmm. Why well, pray? That's not the whole armor of God. And the Bible didn't, didn't say pray, it said pray in the Spirit. I watch out. I would come to a service where you are condemned me. That's what that witch and sister said years ago down in another state. We said, I felt so impressed to come to the door. And she said, the devil told me, don't go in there. He's mean. She said, but I just felt I had to come in. She said, but when I walked up and looked up the aisle and he was preaching, she said, I didn't see a mean man. She said, I seen a mean man full of love wanting to keep me from going to hell. <laughs> Some of you think because I raised my voice, I'm mean. Talk to me, somebody. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, hallelujah. What's, what's this here? Pastor Janet posted that. Sister, Sister Janet, where we're going down yeah. here last month, or the, the last week of uh, next month? Mm -hmm. For there's going to come a time when people won't listen to the truth, but we'll go around looking for teachers who will. Tell them just what they want to hear. 
They won't listen to what the Bible says, but will, will what's that word? Blindly. Blindly follow their own misguided ideas. So they were warned just like we are. Picture, they were warned. Talk about knows what they were warned just like we are. Yeah. How many know when if, if I read let, let me just read real quick here. Genesis 19. Genesis 19, verse 24 and 25. Genesis 19, 24, 25. It aggravates me, people. It really, really it aggravates me. It aggravates me that the devil can pull this kind of stuff on people and people are so stupid they can't see. My God. Somebody say, help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Somebody say, help Brother Humphrey. Help Brother Humphrey. Some of you are going to say, well, you know, I, I'll pray for you. Please do. 19, what did I say? 24, 25? Is that what I said? Yeah. Now this is talking about Solomon and Gomorrah. Then the Lord rained upon Solomon and Gomorrah. Who did it? The Lord. Who did it? The Lord. God is love. Who did it? The Lord. Then the Lord rained upon Solomon and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. From where? From the Lord out of heaven. Who done it? The Lord. Has the Lord changed now that he's not going to do it no more? Verse 25, and he overthrew the, those cities and all the, in, in the plain of other cities too, and all the inhabitants of the cities uh, that which grew up on the ground. God done it. Billy Graham said a number of years ago, if God don't soon judge America and the world, he's going to have to apologize for Solomon no more. That was years ago he said that. thy God. I change not. Jesus Christ is saying, this is today forever. If God hated that sin then, he still hates it today. And how many know it's in the New Testament. I can go back and read it to you out of the New Testament. What's tomorrow's forecast, Brother Hummer? I can tell you what tomorrow is going to be. Evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse. Hillary gets president. She's going to get worse and worse and worse. Yes, yes. Doesn't matter who became president. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. ministry. You can see the rest of this message each Sunday evening, your local time. If you would like to receive our monthly newsletter and know the things the Lord is speaking to Prophet Humphrey, then please send a love offering to help cover our expenses. Also, if you would like to have an anointed prayer cloth and become a ministry partner, send us your picture so we can pray, lay hands on you and your need and expect signs, wonders, and miracles in your life. Starting today, you will never be the same. Our website is upperroomministry.net. If you would like to schedule a speaking engagement, contact our ministry. All glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.